Hey guys, Jay here with Word of Advice TV, and today I want to go over the furnace igniter, or more specifically, the furnace igniter not working. On furnaces, on gas furnaces, there's pretty much just four types of igniters. You've got the standing pilot, only very old furnaces have those yet. That's where you have to manually light the flame, and that little flame stays on all the time. And if you think you have that, but you're not sure, an easy way to check is to just look on your gas valve, and usually it'll have a knob on top of it that'll have an on position, an off position, and a pilot. Mine is not a standing pilot, so you won't see it on mine. On mine, I just have a little switch that says off and on. But with a standing pilot furnace, you would have three positions, on, off, and pilot. So we have a standing pilot, and the next one is a direct spark ignition. And those are generally pretty loud. If that's what you have, you'll probably hear it. When the furnace is trying to start, it'll make a pretty loud racket. So with a direct spark igniter, the gas valve opens, sends gas through the manifold to all the burners, and that spark ignites that gas right away. The third kind is the intermittent pilot. So it's kind of like a standing pilot, but it's intermittent, so it only turns on when there's a call for heat, when the thermostat's calling for heating. So you have a little pilot hood, and usually the gas valve will have a little silver tube coming out of it. That'll be the pilot tube. So whenever there's a call for heat, the pilot valve opens on the gas valve and lets a little bit of gas through and then a spark will ignite that pilot flame and once a flame sensor or a thermocouple senses that the flame is there then the main gas valve opens up and lets the flame through. And ignition source number four is the most common for modern day furnaces is a hot surface igniter and that's what my furnace has as well. That's where they use a little glow stick that glows up to about 1200 degrees and that's what ignites the gas. So I want to go over my furnace quick, how to check the hot surface igniter, and how to replace one. So mine, you can see that little shiny stuff right there. That's my igniter right there. It'll generally be behind your burners. If you see where your flame sensor is, it'll be across the flame sensor on the other side. So that's my igniter right there. So before we get into how to check it, let's just see what it would look like if your igniter is burnt out, or if for some reason it's not getting power. So I turn my power back onto my furnace. So the very first thing that should come on is the inducer motor if there's a call for heat. And there it goes. My thermostat's calling for heat, so that turns on. And in about five, 10 seconds, generally, on my furnace, the igniter should start to glow. But as you can see, mine is not glowing. Then you're gonna hear the gas valve open up. You should hear a click. There it goes. And I don't know if you can hear that on the camera, but I can actually hear the gas hissing out and nothing happens. That's what a typical burnt out igniter scenario would look like. Your gas valve will open up, you'll hear some gas coming out, but the igniter was never glowing. Now my igniter is not actually bad, I just wanted to simulate a bad igniter. I just left mine unplugged slightly so you could see what it looks like. But if I plug it back in and reset my furnace power, we will now be able to see what a normal sequence of operation would look like. So once again, the inducer motor comes on. This time I have it plugged in all the way. And there goes my hot surface igniter. As you can see, it's glowing bright orange like that. Gas valve opens up and there go my burners. Now the best way to check an igniter is of course with the meter. If you don't have a meter, then you can just kind of play it by ear. So like I was saying earlier, if you can hear your gas valve opening, but the igniter was never glowing, then there's a pretty good chance that your igniter is the one that's actually bad. And when you pull it out, I'll pull it out in a little bit here, a lot of times you'll actually see a crack in the middle of the igniter. If you can visually see a crack, then for sure it's bad. There's two ways how you can check an igniter with a multimeter. You can check voltage or you can check resistance. My preferred method is voltage. I like to just check and see if, get my meter to stick on there. I like to just check and see if the igniter is getting voltage. So long story short, if it's getting voltage, but it's not igniting, that means the igniter is bad. If it's not getting voltage, that means something else is wrong, or maybe the board is bad and it's not sending power to it. So how I check voltage on these things, I usually unplug it, I leave the igniter unplugged and then I just put my meter leads inside the plug here from this side 
And you want to be really careful how you jam your meter leads in here. Actually, that's just the thing. You don't want to jam them in there. Be gentle as you're putting them in. Or even better, if your meter leads fit, you can try to backstab it from the back. That way you're not damaging the connectors in here. My leads are having a hard time getting in there, so I'll go from the front. But just be careful so you don't spread out those connectors too much. Then you're going to have a bad connection and that could cause further problems. But anyways, I'll put one lead here and one lead here and check for voltage. So let's turn our power back on. The inducer motor will come on and the next thing that should start is the igniter. Which means I should have 120 volts going to my igniter. And if you look at my meter, as you can see there's 123 volts right there. So my igniter should be glowing. So if you verified that your igniter is getting 120 volts, yet it's not glowing, that means the igniter is bad. Another way you can check it is by checking resistance on it. So if you set your meter to the ohm setting or the horseshoe symbol, the manufacturers generally recommend 40 to 90 ohms is what the regular reading should be on an igniter like this. Some manufacturers say as long as it's under 150 ohms, it's good. But honestly, I've seen igniters at 300 ohms that have been working good for a long time. So I'm not sure how accurate that is. That's why I generally just check the voltage. Because with the hot surface igniter, really it either works or it doesn't. But if your ohms are very high, like over 150 in the 200 range, then perhaps you want to get a spare igniter and just have it by your furnace just in case. But anyways, unplug the igniter again. So to check the ohms on the igniter, I usually like the backstabbing approach for the plug that actually goes to the igniter because the wires are usually thinner so you can fit them in and it's a snugger fit. So you stick one lead into one side and the other lead into the other side. And let's see what our meter has to say. So my igniter is coming out at about, it's going to jump around a little bit, but 71 ohms, let's say. And for the range, 40 to 90, that's perfect, 70 ohms. But if you're seeing like 250, that means that your igniter is starting to fail. And perhaps you should order a new one and just have a spare in case. But like I said previously, 250 doesn't mean it'll fail anytime soon. It could last a couple more years. And just one more thing you should be aware of. If the igniter was hot, or if your furnace was just working, the resistance readings will be different. So when you check these things, they should be at a room temperature for an accurate ohm reading. And now for how to replace them, it's usually pretty simple. On most furnaces, replacing them is pretty easy, but there are some models of furnaces that make it pretty difficult to access. So if you have like a high efficiency furnace where your burners are up on top, sometimes the igniter will be tucked in in the back and it can be a little hard to get to. So if you have some gadgets like this, you know, the angled bit holder or the flexible bit holder, that'll make your life a lot easier. Otherwise, you're going to have to just try to struggle through it with a nut driver or a wrench and it'll probably take you a long time. So some furnaces, if you don't get lucky, are pretty hard to access the igniter on. But in my case, it's pretty easy. All I have to do on mine is take out two quarter wrench screws that are on the bottom right there. And that'll drop down my igniter. And when you have your second screw almost completely out, I would reach in there and grab the igniter bracket so it doesn't drop down when you take that screw out all the way. Because these silicone carbide igniters are very fragile. If this thing drops, there's a good chance it'll shatter. Okay. So here's what my igniter looks like. So here's the igniter itself, and then it's just mounted to a bracket right here with one screw. To replace it, all you would need to do is just simply loosen up this screw right here. You don't even have to take the screw out all the way, you just loosen it. And you can just pop that igniter right out. And then you put the new one right back in, the same way you took the old one out. Tighten it down and you're good to go. And remember how I said you can sometimes visually see if they're burnt out? Most of the time there will be a little crack on the bottom side of the igniter where you'll actually see a line going right through it, like a white burnt out line. 
If you see that on your igniter, then your igniter is for sure bad and it needs to be replaced. And just so you know, sometimes the new igniter will come with a different plug and that's okay. Don't worry about that. All you gotta do is just snip the plug off of the old igniter off and wire nut that onto the new igniter and then just reuse that same plug to plug back into your furnace. And like I said previously, keep in mind that they're very fragile and you also don't want to touch the actual igniter part with your fingers because it'll leave some oil residue on it and that'll create a hot spot and that spot will burn out a lot faster than the rest of the igniter. So don't touch it with your hands, just touch the ceramic part or the bracket when you're putting it back in. And try not to hit the igniter on anything as you're putting it back in because they shatter pretty easily. And that's about it. As you saw, it, there's really not much to it. Just make sure you get the right igniter. One more tip I want to give. Sometimes this, as you can see, there's a ridge on this igniter right here. Sometimes this ridge will not quite line up. The new igniter, I mean. It'll be a little longer. In that case, you can just take some pliers and break that little ceramic part off to make it shorter so it fits into the bracket. This ceramic part is pretty brittle, so it's pretty easy to bite into it with your pliers. And hopefully you were paying attention on how you were taking your old one out. And you will remember how to put it in in a similar fashion. In my case, it's just two screw holes and it's nothing hard. But sometimes the bracket needs to slide into a slot. In that case, it'll be helpful if you either took a picture or remembered how you took the old one out so you can put the new one back in the same way. Because if the igniter is not positioned right, then there's a good chance it'll not ignite the gas. So I put my two screws in and my igniter is ready to go. Well guys, and that is all I had for you today. Just another thing I want to point out is that there is a lot of different kinds of hot surface igniters. The one that I have, the 409 hot surface igniter is very common, but there are many different kinds. So before you go ahead and order one, make sure you take yours out, take a look at it, and make sure that the one you're ordering is the same one that you have. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to mash that like button on the way out, and we'll see you next time. And for those of you that watched this video all the way till the end, let me tell you what I told the customer recently. So I knock on his door, he opens it up, and he tells me, you're late. And I say, yes, I know, I apologize. I was at home painting my nails, I didn't notice the time, and now I'm late. And the customer's like, uh... And at that point, I'm like, yeah, see?